This is part 8 of 13 of our response to Stephen Hargrave's message in the COGR's Revelation series. This is an interesting section because he talks about the fact that um, um, we don't instruct God. And because of some other things, I just thought it was worth including. Known the mind of the Lord. Who hath known the mind of the Lord? That he may instruct him. I want to know who, which one of us had known the mind of the Lord? Which one of us give God instructions? Everybody's hand goes way down. Nobody. Who gives God instruction? Who had and the um the reason I mentioned that was um if you remember Elizabeth Opal um actually said that we could command God, which I thought was pretty bold. <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, there's a scripture about that, isn't there? In the prophets, he says, "Command me." Yeah, but I don't think in that sense. Yeah, it's definitely a bold statement. So she, um, if you remember, there was a gentleman who was ill, and she said that God told her that if he died, that God Himself would be a liar, and then he, of course, died. So she obviously dared to command God. And um, it didn't turn out exactly the right way. But most interesting, um, because cult groups are very much like this, they can never accept blame for having done something that right. is is inopportune. So um, Steve in Mexico apparently got questioned about that, and he put the entire blame on the congregation. Well, you know, they they this poor guy wasn't uh, resurrected, he wasn't saved because the congregation um, wasn't on board with um, following God the way they should be. And then elsewhere, um, I've heard that the multitudes aren't pouring in because the congregations haven't stepped up to their their obligation to, to be holy or, or whatever it is. Um, so like other cult groups, they, the apostles, are not going to share any blame. And then I, so I've heard anecdotal stories. Um, we have, you know, uh, apostles getting medical care and it's swept under the rug. And we have other people stepping down because they may have been involved with whoever, whoever. Um, so it, the apostles are beyond, they're like, they're like our current politicians. They're beyond right. being chastised and corrected for their wrongs. But we right. can certainly find people in the congregation that we need to control and blame. 100%. Probably the most distasteful thing I ever heard someone do uh, in, from from a pulpit, for sure, was when Steve blamed the Mexican congregation for that. You know oh, what? I, I'd say way. that was pretty low, but um, for me, I thought the most disgusting thing that I've seen come out of them was the day that he got up there and he spoke about you and he spoke about... Um, um, yes. Uh, mm. The other... Yeah the other 12 or 13 people that had left the group, um, he he violated um, uh, pastoral confidences. Uh, it was just, that was disgusting. Disgusting. Um, it was a turning point in my relationship with Ray. We, we had been quite friendly, very, very close proximity to that sermon. And that shocking to me that, that he would do that much less in the context of where our communication was. Yeah. And Terrible. then he turned around and, and threatened to dump more garbage. Um, you know, anyway, disgusting, absolutely disgusting. So, no, yeah. the, the apostles are never wrong and the apostles bear no no responsibility. I thought when that happened with Elizabeth, I reached out to a few people in the church and I said, I know this has got to be tough for you. It's got to be. I thought everybody's going to have a faith crisis. Because it was so obviously giving the lie to the fact that Elizabeth can't tell the difference between the voice of God and her own imagination. And that's her whole job. That's the whole position. If you can't do that, why are we listening to you? And all of the apostles are that way. That's very insightful. And it's a really good question. I want to backtrack just for one one second. When we were talking about Ray, speaking about people behind the pulpit, uh, the family that just recently left that, that I've been in communication with, one of the fears I know that they have in Elmer is if you if you don't toe the line, you are mentioned behind the pulpit. 
even if it's in, in an indirect way. So it really puts fear in the congregation to be obedient. It's bad stuff, but it's worth it. If anybody's listening, you got to go through that. Yeah. You can't stay there and be abused. This concludes our video. Thank you for joining us. The resource slides go by rather quickly for sake of time. You may wish to pause on them to read them. There is a link in the description box to the Google Classroom where you will find the resources for this video. Disappointment is a bitter pill to swallow. Pay it back the hope I borrow from someone I never knew. And it's a poor fit, humans in the suits of heroes, undressed by whispered conspiracies in quest for the truth. But if the truth Yeah.